Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson. I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA with a private practice in West Los Angeles, California. We're going to discuss today endo access for the Reb exam on number 30. And this is how you're going to get the tooth from the examiners already mounted. Now when we start our access, we're going to want to look for a position that is in the central groove area, midway between the groove that is formed between the buccal and lingual cusps and the triangular ridges of the mesial buccal and mesial lingual. That will be your starting point. So I'm going to talk about two cases today. The first case is going to be one that is a little bit more conservative than the second case and just show you that both are very acceptable. In this case we're going to utilize the two round carbide to make our punch cut in that green X location. So take a look at how this round burr is going to be angled a little bit towards the mesial to follow the natural distal wall of the pulp chamber area. You will get a dramatic drop in effect when you use this burr. The enamel and the dentin is not that thick so this happens pretty quickly. Now we're going to utilize the LA Access Diamond to do most of the unroofing of the pulp chamber. This is a burr that was designed by Dr. Stephen Buchanan. You can get this through Kerr Endo. It has a safe tip on it. And right now we're not using the two round burr to remove the roof of the pulp chamber. We're utilizing this LA Access burr to immediately go to the uh, unroofing procedure. Now this is going to require a little bit more checking. You're going to have to go back and forth quite a bit and make sure you're uh, unroofing the pulp chamber and you're not creating any ledges. If you use this burr properly and you angle it right and you're always paying attention to the tip of the burr not being uh, you know pushed down into the canals or something but at this point just sort of running across the bottom of the pulp chamber you're usually going to be in pretty good shape. But you're going to want to take a lot of uh, care in checking and checking and checking when you do this because you don't get a, a lot of tactile sensation in, ter in terms of where the roof of the pulp chamber has been removed versus when it's not removed. So once again back to checking we go. So this technique uh, can work really well if you're okay with this continuous verification of where the roof is. One of the things that these uh, X2 teeth have that's uh, characteristic of them is a lot of pulp tissue which is a type of wax and you need to spend a lot of time removing this from the pulp chamber. Please remember that the Reb expects all of the pulp chamber to be clean and free of any pulp tissue so all of that wax has to go. Now you can leave the wax behind in the canals themselves but not in the pulp chamber. And we're just using the Endo Explorer to feel where we have maybe a little bit of a ledge or a little bit of roof remaining and we continue to go back with the LA Access burr. Now and, and like I said we're going to talk about two different techniques today so just showing you this one first. You're going to want to have a small spoon excavator and uh, just be patient in removing all this wax material. I've actually thought about trying some orange solvent, orange solvent on this because orange solvent is a natural organic wax you know solvent and I think it could do a, a good job in removing a lot of the wax. I haven't done it yet. Now we can use the endo zebra just to show you how it would work to maybe smooth the outline form of this LA access access. And once again this burr has a safe tip on it so you're not going to worry about perforating through into the furcation area at all so no worries about that. The main concern you should have here is not overextending the access and making sure you have straight line access to the canals. So as you slide the instrument along the wall, it falls right into the canal rather than having a little ledge before it drops in. And 
notice you have more of an oval shaped distal canal. So we're using the Endo Explorer to show you the canals here. See the mesiolingual there and then uh, we can see that it would be, give you a really nice straight access if we just turn this over and show you where that file would exit the orifice. And then here on the uh, mesial buckle, mesial facial side, you can see once again that you have a nice straight access to that canal as well. And then let's take a look at the distal. Notice how it leans mesially, and this is typical uh, finding of this canal. But once again, a nice straight access. Certainly not a perfect endo access, but one that I think would give you a very high score on the REB. I would be surprised if you didn't get a score of 5 on this particular access. Notice how it's more narrow on the distal than it is on the mesial. And it's a quite large access, uh, much larger than sometimes we find clinically. But that's the nature of the game on the REB. These X2 teeth necessitate a fairly large access. Okay, so why don't we take a look at the next case and we're gonna do a little bit of a different approach. On this one here, we're going to penetrate this little dot area here that we've already identified as the proper location in the central groove area, midway between the buccal lingual groove and the triangular ridges of the uh, mesial buccal and mesial lingual. And we're doing something very different. We're using a 330 diamond. And these diamond burrs penetrate through the X2 teeth really nice. They get through the enamel without chattering or jumping around. They tend to be a little bit more easy to control. And you can see just how small we can make our access compared to the two round burr. So if you're concerned about using the two round burr and having it skid around the surface a little too much and maybe end up creating a little bit larger of an access than you really want, the uh, 330 diamond works really, really well. And I'm going to continue with the 330 diamond now to just uh, feel that burr drop effect and then also to widen the outline form a little bit more because as you know this is going to be a, a fairly large access this and I'll, I'll show you the measurement of this one when we're finished and actually in this particular tooth the access was a little bit larger than the uh, the first case so you'll see uh, why that is and uh, try to understand that there is acceptable very vari variation uh, that will still give you a good grade to go in here Feel it. I'm pulling up. Pulling up again. You know, this is more traditional. We're using the two round burr in that previous sequence there to unroof the chamber and this is more of the methodology that I was taught in dental school rather than moving directly to some kind of a tapered burr uh, because you can use the round burr with tactile feedback you know like I'm showing here with this uh, this uh, angled explorer you can feel the roof right now and kind of understand that it's still there and uh, you can then use your two round burr to feel that as you pull the burr upward. In other words, you're kind of cutting with the top part of the round burr. And there's just a whole bunch of pulp tissue in here. But it's really important to have one of these uh, little angled ends to the explorer and be able to feel tactily that roof that you need to remove. So having felt it and, and, you know, and verified that we do in fact have a lot of roof to still remove, we can then use the burr and slow down the handpiece. Now I'm using high speed, but I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to really feel as the burr pulls up on those little overhangs. And keeping in mind that the desired shape is somewhat trapezoidal, 
with the larger side towards the mesial and the smaller side towards the distal. And you know, use an explorer to verify you have a nice smooth wall and you'll start to feel uh, the explorer drop down into the canal about this stage. You can use an endo explorer which might be a little bit easier to get into the deeper areas but I'm just using the standard shepherd's hook style. Now here's a uh, small spoon. You can certainly use a larger one uh, to remove the pulp tissue. And I'm just dying to try out that orange solvent technique I just talked about. Maybe uh, one of you guys out there can give the orange solvent a try and put some of that orange sol solvent or dye lubricant also works very similarly. They're very much related. And place some of that in there and see if that helps or if it hinders the process. It might leave the pulp tissue so so difficult to remove at that point it actually works in reverse but it might be something for some to try and comment in the comments section of the video. So I can definitely feel a really large ledge back there on the distal and I realize that this pulp chamber has some variability and that not every one of these is exactly the same. The one thing they do have in common is that they're all fairly large. And I also would say that the starting point for all of these pulp chambers is, is always in the same place. But you can really feel that, that overhang right there that the round burr is able to, to remove. So it's, it's, it's a technique that, like I said, this is what I was taught with. And it, and it feels more comfortable to me to know exactly where to place the outline. You know, and the reason why I let you listen to that, and normally I, I like to silence these things, is so that you can feel the pulp chamber better by slowing down the burr and, and sort of letting it stall out on you. And see right there, that, that, that definite ledge, uh, or overhang is a better way to say it, uh, that we need to remove. So don't be uh, shy to use the high speed throughout the procedure and Use it at a little bit of a slower rotation so you can gain a little bit more control. And we continue to uh, use the Explorer to, to find the canals and remember where they are so that we can obtain that straight line, straight line access. Now you notice here that the distal is not extended very far. And when we are finished with this, the distal is going to need to extend significantly farther distally on this particular tooth. So I'm going to go to uh, the endo Z at this point uh, to at least work with uh, the mesial part and uh, the distal part here. Uh, if I'm really careful about feeling where it is, I can use this uh, burr and check a lot. But don't be afraid to just stick with the two round burr if you want. So I can measure that uh, we have a lot of the burr will remain above the orifice of the the access actually uh, when we use the burr and it won't be touching the bottom but even if you did push it down a little bit deeper you're not going to perforate anything because it also has a safe tip on it it's a different shape it doesn't have that extension it has more of like a little polished dome shape at the end of this this burr so when you use this burr you want to use it as if you were creating a nice smooth outline form on a gold inlay preparation or ceramic inlay. Very, very smooth walls and create taper where it's required and uh, convergency where it's required like on the distal. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful burr to use, uh, but you do have to go back and check repeatedly to make sure that you're not leaving anything uh, overhanging. It's just a little bit of a, a overhang there that needs to be corrected. So the goal is if you can take your Explorer and start at the orifice and pull up, you won't click on anything that's hanging over. 
And then when you start at the top and you push down, you don't hit a ledge as you go towards the orifice. That's the goal. So what we found in this particular case is that there was a lot of overhanging area that needed to be uh, removed further. Uh, if you wanted to go back to the round burr, you could, but at this stage, uh, I felt more comfortable just continuing with the endo Z. I'd say that you're going to have more problems by making your access too small than you would if you make your access too big, too large. But that's sliding in really nicely. And that side right there looks like it's sliding in pretty well too. But on the distal, there's a big overhang right there. And uh, I, I believe that it would be a good idea to extend it a little bit further. Now you're going to see in this particular example that the distal was extended a little bit further than the previous case and perhaps this extension could have been a little bit more conservative than it is but you can even see the overhang see it there and that little area and we're going to show it with the explorer right here that is a definite roof that must be removed if you left that behind you'd be in big trouble so this particular variation is going to require us to push the burr distally much more than in the previous case. And you know the great thing about the RAP is they're just really fair. They're a very reasonable uh, examination team and see just a little bit more still there. And so what they're going to do is they're rarely going to look actually at your actual tooth. They're going to look mostly at the radiographs. I don't remember how many they will screen and you don't know if yours will be looked at or not. So they're going to screen a certain percentage of them and look at the actual tooth, but not every single tooth. So what they're going to look at for the most part are the radiographs at the end. And the radiograph should justify the size of your access to make sure that you can see directly down into the canals with straight line access. Not, not, with just one view, you'd have to tip the type on to see down the distal because that distal wall is going to be leaning mesially. But it's just still quite a bit overhanging here. So on this case, it's just going to need to go a little bit more distal. You may think, oh, this is so tedious, this video is long, but I think it's really important for you to see that this is not something that just happens automatically. You have to really work hard at this. And I would love to stop here, but unfortunately we can't because the distal is very different than the first case. When I was a student many years ago, we didn't have uh, this burr. I wish we had. It's really kind of amazing. Um, it would have made endo so much more appealing to me when I was a student, but uh, we didn't have it, so oh well. Anyway, here's the, uh, the last bit of pulp that we're trying to remove out from the chamber and seeing that there may be just a little bit more of the outline form that needs to be fixed here. Very tedious. You have to work really hard at this. Get all that pulp chamber out of there. Now don't worry about the spoon causing any problems. Uh, unless you're really pushing hard with a spoon, you're not going to have any issues at all with scraping away tooth structure. And also please understand that I'm a restorative dentist. I am not an endodontist. And I definitely, I'm, I'm showing you my weakness here in this preparation of the access. I'm, I'm just using the methods that we were taught in school uh, that I would still continue to do today to obtain an access that meets the criteria for the REB pass. When we get to the obturation access, instrumentation obturation of the anterior tooth, uh, you'll see the entire process, but in this case, we're just doing the 
the access down that distal canal. It's also ribbon shaped. It may have been just a little bit too wide on the distal. It could have been maybe a little bit more truncated, but it does have really good straight line access and it doesn't have any ledging. And uh, I think that when you see the final radiograph, see it's way back there. Isn't that interesting? So when you see the final radiograph, you're going to understand why this particular situation was done the way it is. My goodness, four and a half millimeters. That's really, really long mesial distally. On, on the distal part, it's maybe about a little bit, maybe a 1.75 in here. We're looking at about 2, 2.25 or something like that. But we want to make it uh, fairly smooth, rather uniform. But look at how close we are to the distal pit. That's unusual. But this could be your tooth, so you have to be prepared for whatever happens. And don't just try to memorize one kind of an outline form. Use the evidence that the tooth is giving you to determine where she, you should place your outline form. So we're nearing the end of this uh, access video. I hope this has helped. We showed you two different cases today. One that utilizes one technique, utilizing a two remember to punch through. The other one is utilizing a 330 diamond to do uh, the access and a little bit of variation between the LA axis burr and the endo Z burr. So let's show you the final radiographs of this case. The, the one view here that I'm going to show you first is the mesial, and I think that that meets the criteria of straight line access, and then here is from the facial view. I don't think you can worry too much about that particular result. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.